What's that time of year again? Pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin pie, warm fire, more pumpkin pie, and year-end tax loss harvesting. I'm going to give you some important deadlines for 2023, explain to you the differences between tax loss harvesting versus proper tax positioning. They're not the same animal. And then we're going to help you to find some stinkers inside your portfolio and to flip them into something good smelling. So let's get right to it. Beginning with the whole point of tax loss harvesting is to turn your lemons into lemonade. We all have investments that don't work out. Maybe we had lots of promising ideas that this investment was going to become the next greatest thing, but it doesn't work out for whatever reason. And so this is an opportunity for you to take those losers and make a tax-friendly situation for yourself, unload them, clean up the portfolio, and uh, get things correctly aligned in a way that gets you back on track. So tax loss harvesting, just some of the basics. You can take losses that uh, could be used dollar for dollar to offset capital gains. And uh, you can offset up to $3,000 per year of regular income with realized losses. So that's another obvious benefit. And then losses that exceed that $3,000 threshold can be carried forward perpetually in future years. Now, it's important for me to underscore that tax loss harvesting and tax positioning are not the same animal. They're different. I'll explain to you the differences between each in this next slide. So tax loss harvesting um, really deals with using your losses, your investment losses to offset any capital gains and or income in a single tax year. It's also important to underscore that tax loss harvesting is limited to investments that are held inside your taxable accounts or what I call the taxable bucket. Now, tax positioning is something completely different because it deals with how your money is spread across your three buckets. And the three buckets are the taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. That's the only place all of us can have our money Regardless of how much you have, if you're a multi-billionaire, it doesn't matter. These are the only three places that money could be located. Or if you're not a billionaire, same thing. It applies to everyone. Also, the other important thing to remember is that tax positioning is much bigger in scope and scale because it impacts all three of your buckets. And for that reason, it's arguably more important than just tax loss harvesting. And this kind of gives you a visual to help you understand proper tax positioning and how it applies to all three buckets, your taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. And tax loss harvesting is different because it only happens in one bucket. It only impacts that taxable bucket. And uh, so that's what we're talking about in this particular episode. So tax loss harvesting, what are the the benefits? Why do people, uh, especially financial advisors or tax professionals, why do they talk about it uh, so often? We're going to talk about it more as we get deeper into the fourth quarter on this channel. we got some upcoming interviews uh, planned for you on our episode series, our original series called Spotlight. So we'll be talking more extensively about the application of tax loss harvesting in the setting of an investment portfolio and how ETFs can be utilized to help you with that. But you're really replacing some of those stinkers, those losers with investments that may offer you more upside in terms of income as well as growth potential. Another benefit is you can replace some of those losing positions with investments that are perhaps less risky and more diversified. And then, of course, you you get the chance to replace your losers um, by doing that, uh, by immediately replacing those losers with something else that will help you to avoid missing any potential rebound or upswing that may happen in financial markets. I mean, that's one of the worst fears investors have, right? I, I sell an investment that's a stinker, and then, you know, the minute I sell it, it you know, that the market starts to go up. So this allows you to avoid being in that conundrum. Again, turn your lemons into lemonade. Tax loss harvesting, let's take a look at just a quick example. And I picked out these ticker symbols, not because they're necessarily candidates for tax loss harvesting for 2023, but just because they're 
popular each uh, ticker symbols of, of widely followed stocks that I think will just help you understand conceptually how tax loss harvesting works. So let's just suppose you got a $5,000 capital gain in Apple for 2023. Let's say you also own shares of Starbucks, which is worth $2,500 less than what you paid, right? So this is in your taxable account, right? So if you sold that Apple but kept Starbucks, you'd have a $5,000 capital gain, right? That would be the tax. Now, if you sold both Apple and Starbucks, now you're starting to do some planning, right? You're, you're matching up your winners with your losers. You're offsetting your, your, your capital gains with capital losses. You're doing some tax loss harvesting, right? You'd minimize the amount that you pay for that capital gain it would co go down to, from five thousand to to twenty five hundred dollars. So that's in the nutshell tax loss harvesting. It's just planning, right? Matching up your winners and your losers. Now, in terms of tips, things that can help you for tax loss harvesting, start looking at your portfolio right now. Look at your taxable investments. Again, um, if you've got a individual brokerage account or a joint account or another taxable type of account, look at your your losers as well as your winners. You want to identify them and figure out, is there an opportunity to up unload some or all of each to lower your overall tax bill? Maybe you, you want to you know keep your winners and uh, just sell your losers or maybe sell some of your losers, not all of them. So these are things that you need to map out and think about. The main point I want to bring out to you is don't wait to the last minute. Start putting your grocery list of of identify those winners, those losers, put your grocery list together right now, and then don't wait till the last minute to uh, start planning for your tax loss harvest harvesting. You want to do this earlier is much, much better. And also some important deadlines. You got December 29th. That's the final day of trading for major U.S. stock markets. So for equity and, and type of accounts, that's going to be important, your brokerage accounts. And then for those of you that have cryptocurrency accounts, of course, those trade 24-7, 365. So you've got until December 31st. Yes, you can do tax loss harvesting with cryptos. So again, my main point is don't wait to the last minute. Plan ahead. Uh, you don't want to uh, leave this to the very last minute. As far as wash sale rules, so there's two parts to this that you need to understand that are very important. After you realize losses, you may want to take some of that money and redeploy it into something else, right? Maybe you've got an asset allocation that you're trying to stick with. Well, it's important for you to understand that the IRS has rules, and their rule mandates that an investor cannot claim a loss on the sale of an investment and then buy a substantially identical security uh, with, within 30 days. And so that's very important if you're going to redeploy those sale proceeds from that loser, you want to make sure it's a very different type of asset. Now, keep in mind the IRS has not clearly identified or, or defined, rather, what constitutes a substantially identical security. But we still need to use good judgment here. And so when you're choosing to reinvest the proceeds uh, the, from that, that loser in a similar investment, you want to just make sure that there is limited overlap with the original investment and just make sure that um, there, there's some, some differences in the return path, performance, and uh, the greater the holdings overlap or mimic each other or are more similar, the greater the risk of a wash sale classification by IRS, which would not be good. And then as far as a general framework, I like this. This is a from BlackRock, a tax loss harvesting framework, really, really cool visual that shows you, if you look at the left here, you got the original security. Um, so in this case, you got individual stocks, active mutual funds, and then ETFs or index mutual funds. That's at the top level. And then you've got potential replacements. So for example, if you've got an individual stock that's been a loser and you just want to get rid of it, well, potential replacements might be, for example, a sector ETF. For example, uh, you know, in the same sector. So if you got, let's say, an energy stock, actually, let's do utilities because utilities are down this year. So if you got a utility that 
has been a horrible performer. You want to sell it, uh, but you want to take those proceeds and redeploy them into something else immediately that's different. Maybe take a look at a, a sector ETF in the same grouping, uh, for example, utilities, which uh, could be classified as something different. It's more diversified. It's not just a single utility stock. So that would be one idea. Um, and then, you know, the other thing, too, is you get more diversification than holding just a single security or a single company. So um, that's something to think about. And then you can apply this same strategy across other types of investments. You can do it with active mutual funds. You can even do it with ETFs that may be losers and replace them with other ETFs. There's lots of applications for tax loss harvesting, and uh, this is just uh, an idea, a good chart to give you some ideas. And as far as other ideas, well, if you need help with your portfolio, check out my original series called Portfolio Makeover. We talk about a lot of these subjects that impact your retirement account as well as your uh, other investments. We also have um, my latest book called Portfolio Architecture, which gets into some of these topics. you got 27 model ETF portfolios, but also you've got the discussion of proper tax positioning and then, of course, the three cornerstones of an architecture sound portfolio. It's not just asset allocation and diversification. It's also having an adequate cushion or margin of safety. I even built a tool. So go to ETFguide.com, check out that tool, use it. It will help you to strengthen your overall investment portfolio with the purpose of helping you get ahead and stay ahead. In my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about proper tax positioning and elaborate more on that. I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this particular uh, video. Hit the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. And um, don't forget, those deadlines are fast approaching for 2023. So get it done. Take a look at tax loss harvesting. I think it could certainly help you. We'll catch you next time.